hello hello and welcome to a very exciting video i mean you may not find it exciting i find this kind of thing just like thrilling like living my best life through this project honestly so rewind to the beginning basically i was thinking about a christmas present for the children and we only really tend to get them like one big thing for their main presents, um, aside from stockings. So I was just trying to think what would actually be something that they would use and that would be exciting. Cause I feel like they just have a lot of toys like through various relatives and things over birthdays and Christmases over the years. They just have lots of things that they can play with. So then I remembered that their old doll's house that I had kind of made or decorated for Maggie just before Lars was born. So this was kind of his present to Maggie to kind of make his arrival a bit nicer. <laughs> like, hey, I've arrived and I got you a doll's house, so please love me and don't hit me. <laughs> so that was what we gave to her just as Lars arrived. And then as he's grown up, he's also really enjoyed playing with it because yeah, they just both love like making little scenes and imaginary games. But recently at the doll's house that I had done for them, it just like the, I don't know, the bit that was nailed together came out and it just split in half. And I tried to put it back in, but it didn't really work very well. So that was a bit done. So they needed something new. And then I was like, actually, it'd be really great if there was like a bigger version so that they could more easily both play at the same time. And then I started searching on Facebook Marketplace and just fell down a rabbit hole of a million different doll's house options. And there were some that were like really, really good value. Like honestly, don't buy a new doll's house there. I feel like there's always loads on Facebook Marketplace. And I found this one that I was really happy with because it was just plain raw wood, like all of it. So I just thought actually that makes it a bit easier for decorating it and, and things. And it was in pretty good condition. Like there were some bits and pieces that I had to sand and whatnot, but it was, it was in pretty good condition. And what I did not realize is because Nick went, I sent him on his merry way to go and collect it. And when he brought it back, I didn't actually realize that there was loads of furniture and like little um, kitchen-y, like fake food and crockery and stuff included and and some dolls and stuff as well and some stairs and a fireplace. I was like, oh, okay, wow, bonus. That actually was even better value than I thought it was. I was using that as a base and then decorating it. And the idea was that I was gonna give it to them as a joint Christmas present. And then I just, I just fell into a hole. <laughs> I literally was living out all of my renovation dreams through this doll's house because we rent and there's only so much that we can do and also we don't have extensive amounts of money i feel like i poured all of my dream energy into the doll's house and uh yeah i may have got a bit carried away but it was so fun to do this doll's house up i have to say it's so fun and also I probably should have decided sooner because having the Christmas deadline meant that there were a lot of very late nights slash early hour of the morning bedtimes, which was not ideal, but I did just love doing the whole thing up. And I love that it's really personalized and there isn't another doll's house out there quite like it. And I basically finished pretty much all of it. There were just some small details that I had left to do post Christmas, but it was it was pretty much there. It looked almost as it should do for Christmas day. And um, I'm really pleased with it. I had thought about doing a, up a big doll's house for a while, but was like, seriously, Terry, you haven't finished doing up all the rooms in your own house yet. So 
I knew that I wouldn't be able to do it half-heartedly, like I would be all in. So I'd kind of limited myself from that. And yet suddenly I just decided that this would make a really great Christmas present for them. So yeah, it's done now. And um, I would, and I thought I would show you a bit of the process on how I did things. I haven't got like really specific in depth tutorials about all the different parts, but I think a lot of it is quite self-explanatory. But anyway, a look at the doll's house renovation journey. So here she is. She is beautiful. Got her from Facebook Marketplace and she's in not bad condition, I have to say. Um, I need to start by doing some kind of sanding like here and um, where there were things stuck on the walls and stuff. But I mean, aside from that, it's all just kind of raw wood ready to go. No kind of existing paint and stuff to work around and then this bit up here as well and it came with like a bunch of stuff i've ordered some things on ebay as well but also we've got the we've got the stairs which were included i'm so excited to get going with this i think as i just said i'm gonna start with sanding and then then i can do some painting of the actual rooms and then what I want to do is do a little bit of panelling and tongue and groove um, and I've got a bunch of things that I'm going to put on the walls and stuff but also some of these bits of furniture which I ordered from eBay which like are so beautiful <laughs> um, but they're in like this really orangey toned wood um, which I'm not such a fan of so I want to sand and or just prime and paint some of those different colors I'm gonna have a little route around in my paint stash and see what I've got available oh, I've ordered some like tester pots which are on the way but I want to do as much as I can with existing paint So I really wanted to do some panelling in this little room. Um, I was thinking it would look really nice with the wallpaper, which is this, and it's a lovely miniature William Morris design, and actually the same wallpaper that I have upstairs in our office study room. Um, so to start with, I just worked out how far down the walls the wallpaper needed to go and just measured out what I needed and cut it out with a scalpel. And then I'd already pre-painted underneath kind of the edges where the doll's house came out in that room and the ceiling in this lovely green colour. Then I thought of this genius idea to use these thin lolly sticks for the wood panelling going around underneath the wallpaper. 
and I just cut off the edges where it was rounded to give them straight edges and a nice right angle so it was going to sit right on the kind of wood floor bit of the doll's house and then I got a template version of one panel working out how high I wanted it to go up the wall so I just measured that out and then once I'd cut that to the right size and I had something to measure all of the other little lolly sticks against and very quickly get all the pieces that I needed for my paneling. I say very quickly, it was actually more time consuming than I thought it would be. But as you can see here, I'm just matching them up to make sure that they're the right size. And um, yeah, just cut a million of those. And then here you can see I've put the wallpaper in and now you can just see the nice green ceiling and the bits around the edge but i then used some of my trusty wood glue to um, attach all the panels which again is a very straightforward process but actually kind of time consuming it turns out when you've got so many little panels of lolly stick <laughs> And I just carried on going all the way around. This Evo stick glue doesn't actually take very long to dry. So I just pressed it for a moment and then it was kind of fine. And then I bought a little bit of wood trim from a shop, which I will link in the description box. I finished off the top of the wood with that. And then I primed the paneling all the way around and then did some more of this lovely green color on top. And I just kind of protected the wallpaper with a bit of paper while I was doing it. After all of that, I thought I hadn't had enough of paneling, even though at this point it had already taken me quite a while. But I decided to do some in the kitchen, which I painted in this kind of off-white color. And then I cut some thicker lolly sticks. Yeah, that's right. All different shapes and sizes of lolly sticks going on here. And I basically did the same and with the wood trim at the top of that and then painted over the top of those as well. I just thought it gave a nice backdrop to what was gonna be the kitchen. And I put my little shelf on top of that and um, painted over that as well. So it all kind of looked cohesive and like the kitchen that I would like in real life. Now, as I said, I'd got a lot of furniture free and some in an eBay bundle, and I didn't like the kind of reddish tones of the wood. So I did get to work priming quite a lot of those furniture pieces and then painting over the top with whatever kind of random bits of paint that I had lying around or tester pots that I still had. These kitchen pieces I did in Stone Rosy from Frenchique, which is like my go-to beige color. It's brilliant. And then I also got this little fireplace free in the bundle that came with the doll's house, but the actual stem of the chimney breast was too long. So I just measured what I needed, sawed it off with a little handsaw and then sanded it down and then it fit perfectly. And then it was time to get to doing some of the flooring because I thought obviously it made sense to paint the rooms first which I did but then we needed to sort out the floor situation so I got these sheets of flooring from I think some of them were from eBay and some might have been from that doll's house website that I've been talking about that I will link down below but anyway just measured and cut to size and then I put some more of the wood glue on the bottom of the wood before just attaching and pressing down the wood on top and then put some heavy things on it to make sure it was just all flush and sitting right and just left it for a bit and as you can see here this is the tin tile paper they were all different so this was more like paper whereas the wood had a finish on it which meant that it was shiny and more protected so i had to go back over with protective layers on some of the flooring and then I thought, why not add some paneling? I saw this really sweet wood paneling on that doll's house site and just thought, yep, I have to have some of that going on in the house. So once again, measured it to the right length. I had to do an extra panel along that back wall and then I just cut it with a, 
like craft knife which is all it really needed and then i primed it and then i painted it in the same color as the walls this was a coat paint um i can't really remember what it was called but again that will be in the description box and I needed a, at least a few coats of this and then for the attic i'd painted around the edges in a kind of creamy white color and then i added this wallpaper which i already had from the wardrobe upcycle for <laughs> my kids dolls and i just used that and glued it onto the back wall of the doll's house attic then I revisited those kitchen cabinets that I painted and I added some vinyl that I already had, some wood effect vinyl that I'm going to use somewhere else in the house, but I just took a little bit off and then made it the right size, trimmed it off with my craft knife and then I stuck the units in the kitchen with some super glue so that the kids couldn't like just constantly pull it apart. And then I also added some little tiny hooks along the top of that panelling to hang some stuff on. Then I just started putting some of the little accessories that I had into the house, some of the things I'd painted, some of the little rugs I'd got, which were for dolls' houses. Then I also took this mattress that the bed came with and I just covered it with some fabric that I actually liked. And then I also painted the stairs and I added a little runner with this hessian ribbon running down the middle of it, which I thought worked quite well. Then it was time to tackle the outside, which again I had primed and then I decided to do a kind of off-white colour again for the bulk of it, but I also added in this like grey slate colour on the roof, which I just rolled on, did a couple of coats and it was looking vastly better and more like a house. Excuse the TV in the background and the Christmas tree, as you can see <laughs> the time frame that this was and uh, how long it has been since I actually finished this. And then on the front, I just added some details in that slate gray color as well. I taped off bits so that it wouldn't go on the other paint. Um, I also added some kind of details with a, just a sharpie to make it look like bricks and also painted windows and the door. Hello, hello. I am sat on the floor in the living room because I was by the doll's house. I needed to measure things and decide where I was going to have them. But then I've just carried on sitting here for some strange reason, which now means like my legs have completely <laughs> gone numb. <laughs> um, but yes, sorry, it's, it's a very dark day. I'm also wearing a scarf because I am cold, just permanently cold. Um, but I am working on trying to decide where the frames that I got for the doll's house are gonna go, um, which, I have, which I have decided. Um, and then I was just thinking about like what artwork should go in them. I mean, this kind of stuff is a fun bit, right? I'm basically just repurposing um, downloadable art that I've used in our home, pretty much. So yeah, I've just been working it out, measuring them to get the right size and then I've laid out all of the art pieces on in a document so that I can print them out and then we'll see if I need to put some kind of like clear acetate over the front or if I could just paint like a, a layer of clear glue on it to protect it because these don't have glass they're just literally the frame hey hey um i'll show you what i've got so far so yeah i've kind of laid all the frames out and then just worked my way through once i knew where i was going to put them i think this is the final kind of rundown of what i'm going to go for so now i think they should be all in the right size and i'm just going to print them off and see how they look on the wall 
then it was time to do all the little miniature details and I had these wooden books that came with the doll's house and I just covered them with some kind of vintage images that I found and kind of made into a little wrap around that I then glued on with some super glue. Um, for these, I kind of lay out some spines in Photoshop and then added the long bits on the side. And then, yeah, just to make them look a little bit more interesting, a little bit more vintage. I think it works really well. I then did also cover them with like a clear layer of Mod Podge just to protect the paper, because obviously this was just thick paper and then trimmed the edges and voila, got some books. <laughs> Then some of the little wooden details that came with Doll's House again were really sweet. I just wanted to stain the wood so it wasn't quite so light. And with this, I actually just used some acrylic paint that was watered down, like that was all. Just brushed it all on and it seemed to work really well. So there you go, you don't even need actual wood stain if you're kind of doing it for <laughs> a Doll's House and not real life use. And then I'd also made some details out of polymer clay, just some things that I wanted that I didn't already have. So like a plant pot and some more photo frames, a little bit for a uh, mantelpiece clock and a lampshade. And then I just painted them, some of them with this gold metallic paint and then some of them in other paints, which again was just acrylic paint just a few coats and um, added some details like on the bowl I did some little painted stripes and stuff and then for the light I just threaded in this wire that was basically plaited together and then I added this wooden bead on the end as kind of a light bulb sort of thing and then kind of twisted a bit at the end which meant that the bead wouldn't come off and then added some more of my super glue just to stick it on properly and keep it in place and I think it worked really well. Obviously I put a hole in the top before I baked it so that I could thread this through. Do it before rather than after, that would be my advice. And then I had a little wooden lampshade that I painted with a gold bottom, a white top and then I added this concertina, just paper, kind of thick paper bit around the top and stuck it on with some super glue just to make that kind of a more interesting lampshade and also that seemed to work quite well just kind of space out where the folds are to make sure that it's all even and then I did a little layer around the top so that it was all sturdy and wasn't gonna just get knocked about and bent out of shape. So there you go, that was the whole process and the final reveal of the house, which I have completely fallen in love with. 
I am definitely living vicariously through this like miniature world <laughs> that I've created and there was so much more that I could have done but there had to be a cut-off point before I was like this is a doll's house <laughs> it's not my real house if you were thinking about doing a similar thing I hope that that's maybe giving you a little bit of inspiration or maybe you're just longing to renovate your own house but you can't so maybe you can just kind of have that as a little outlet. I've heard lots of people say, and people message me like, is it okay that I don't have children, but I want to get a doll's house and do it up? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, I, I probably would have done that. <laughs> Even if I didn't have children, they were just like a reason to do it sooner. <laughs> so yeah, if you did enjoy this video, if you like, doll's house makeovers and real life room makeovers then do consider following along and subscribe to my channel if you like this video i would love it if you gave it a thumbs up and i would love to hear your thoughts in the comments but also if you have done your own like doll's house makeover like what did you do what kind of like aesthetic where you're going for did your kids end up ruining it and your heart broke i really hope that that doesn't happen <laughs> and yeah if you would like to see more kind of behind the scenes day-to-day -day stuff then you can follow me on my instagram where my handle is just the lovely draw and i will see you in the next video which is more than likely going to be a life-size project <laughs> lovely to have you here thank you for sticking around till the end and i will see you next time goodbye guys